Hi everyone, it's Ash from UK DAB Networks. Hope you're doing well. Uh, today I'm going to do a video about this the Factum Radioscape Observer Field Monitor. I've got to start by saying this video is not sponsored, it's not a review or anything like that. I'm just showing you um, some equipment that I use uh, to take real world measurements from my DAB multiplexes. So without further ado, let's see what's inside the box. So it comes in this uh, sturdy little flight case. Right, you can see what's inside here. So, this is where all the magic happens. Little small cigarette sized, you know, device there. Got a USB stick for installing the software. I don't need that because I've already installed the software. Antenna base. Obviously the antenna whip, so I'll screw that in. Pretty straightforward so far. Got an antenna cable here. This is obviously you know, going to be quite handy uh, depending on where you deploy the antenna, so it doesn't necessarily have to be straight next to the receiver. And of course you could just plug in your own um, you know, antenna if you if you have like a if you're going to use this somewhere in like in a static location. But anyway, I'll just screw this in, so it's really straightforward here. I do actually have my own cable for when I'm at home, just monitoring what's going on. USB cable, so I plug that in, and then obviously the other end, the USB in the computer. That's pretty straightforward. You plug the other end of this cable, getting ahead of myself here. So I'm going to plug the other end of this cable into my antenna. So it goes in like that. Turn, turn, turn. As you can see, the setup's not really that difficult. Right, and then finally, this here, we've got the GPS antenna. So I'm just going to move this box to the side. So the antenna. Um, I've got a good signal where I am, so I'm just going to stick it on the uh, radiator there. Right. Unwire the GPS. So again, screw that in here. So the setup is a real doddle. Even if you, you know, you're out and about, it doesn't take long to set up. So again, this GPS antenna, I'm just going to stick it in the window. So that's the setup complete. Okay, so that's the setup. I've installed the software, uh, like I said already, so just click on it to open it up. After the license check, you get presented with a few different menu options. What those menu options are depend obviously on uh, what your license is, but uh, we wanna just check off air DAB. So here I've uh, done a scan already, so I've got a list of available multiplexes there. If you want to, you can just type in a uh, the multiplex frequency there. Sussex is my most local one, so let's give that one a whirl. So you can see straight away here, um, the multiplex is loaded up. So these are all the different services. Um, so we've got 10 audio there, one data. You've got things like the ensemble ID there. Um, and then down at the bottom here, we've got a snapshot. So if you've ever viewed one or you'll be familiar with what a snapshot looks like, but it's basically, you know, the, the order of everything on the multiplex here. So you can hover over for more information, um, which is quite handy on these fiddly little data services there. Um, and obviously there's capacity not used, which are on this multiplex is at the end. Um, what you also have is you have a nifty uh, little visual here of everything that's going on. So you can see the DLS bit rate, sample rate, that kind of thing. And you can uh, click on a service um, to get more information. In fact, you can do that, you know, however you want really. Also, if you don't want to, you don't have to display all of these services. So you can go back to the ensemble mem uh, menu and basically just unche uncheck the ones that you don't want. So if you don't want hits radio or I don't know, more radio, <laughs> Just for example, go back to the station list and you see that they've gone now. So again, this is quite a handy tool. Oh, that's the other thing as well. This multiplex doesn't broadcast a uh, slideshow, but if it did, you would see the slide appear there. So anyhow, right, so we go back to the main multiplex there. So we can see things like the component information there. 
whether a service is primary service or secondary service, sub-channel number. These are all set by the multiplex operator. Um, time, you know, obviously the, when I film this video, it's British summertime, so we've got a timing offset there, which is all very good. On the uh, fig tab, we can view the fig repetition rates. So you double click, oh, click too fast then. So again there, that's all very good. Uh, service linking. So lots of service links on this particular multiplex and you can scroll if there's any more. So yeah, lots of info there. This is really handy actually for car radios if you're trying to figure out um, whether or not the information is present because um, different car manufacturers, uh, you get different results. So here it's good to see what actually is signaled on the multiplex. So again, your frequency info there for other services, um, ensemble info there. Uh, that no announcements are broadcast uh, on this marks, but if there were any particular announcement flags, then um, you would see them there. So again, you've got ETI screen there. Um, scroll down and RF statistics. So what we have here, uh, this is basically like a timeline. So here we've got as things are happening now, um, and then it's being logged there. So we've got a representation of the last minute. Obviously I've only just turned it on now, but you could leave this running and get a graph over time to see how things have changed. Modulation statistics is quite an interesting screen uh, to look at. So you can see here, um, this is a good signal, um, which is to be expected because I'm very close uh, to, to a main transmitter here. Um, but again here, if you look at the channel impulse response graph, you can see uh, what the delay is from your nearest uh, transmitted to the most distant one. But this is all good, so that's great. And then transmitters, this is kind of really handy, more so if you're doing a drive around. So if you're doing a drive around, you could see which transmitters come, which go, but like I said, uh, I'm at home at the moment, so you know, this isn't really gonna change unless the transmitter suddenly goes on to reduced power um, or something like that. Map is a really good like kind of visual tool for you to see what's, uh, you know, what's going on. So this is where I am. And then here we can see the four transmitters that I can receive. This is all, you know, this is quite customizable. You can move things around. So you can see, for example, my strongest signal here um, has the very dark line. Whitehawk Hill is a, quite a weak one, which is kind of p to be expected because it's further away and the line is fainter there. And again, if we were driving around, that would that would change. So um, data logging, this tab here, this is quite handy for when you're doing uh, drive arounds, uh, you wanna capture data, you can basically customize this um, with whatever fields you want. So kind of like, these are my favorite ones, um, you know, for doing a drive around to see signal strength, transmitters are available at a particular location. Um, but yeah, you can really kind of customize it to um, you know, whatever you want there. So there, there is so, there's so much information that you can, you know, you can kind of capture if you want to. Um, but yeah, no, really good tool that is. And then this kind of last screen here, the custom screen, this is really handy um, if you just wanted to leave it running all day and just observe one or two things in particular. So you just basically, you know, build, you can draw your own square like so build it up like that and then you know so whatever your kind of favorite things are you can do audio levels from a particular service so it's a really handy uh you know handy little thing there the other thing uh, that you can do is um, which i like to do a lot is you can actually just record um, like off-air ETI, or you can record uh, FIC information. So I press this record to file button, just select what I want there. So I'll do ETI and then press uh, 
start saving and then it will just start recording there and then or if you want to do a delayed recording for some reason um, then you just set the time in there and uh, yeah off you go so that's a really handy tool then if I want to play back those recordings what I do is I stop this then I go to my ETI file and then I just click on one earlier I did earlier so let's have a look at this old one London Free here and there we go so we've got a timeline there for the length of time the recording is I like to do five minute recordings I think this might have been a slightly less than that but again here you know you can view the services as they were recorded so if, if you just want to see what the multiplex was like at a particular point in time um, you know really good uh, tool for doing that hi everyone that's it for now thanks very much for watching if you've got any questions comments or video suggestions please put them below and i'll do my best to follow up um and yeah look forward to more great videos uk dab networks has won four small scale multiplexes so far this year very exciting and uh videos to follow about what we're doing with the launch and i'll also do a follow-up video using the fact and radioscape observer field monitor we'll do a little drive around take some real world transmitter measurements and i'll share them with you anyway thanks so much for watching take care and i'll see you again soon bye